We're here to celebrate the renovation of the Champlain Street Park. While not the largest park in the city, pocket parks like this one serve a valuable role by providing a quiet public green space for people that live and work in neighborhoods that surround them. And while today is a joyful occasion, we must also acknowledge a tragic incident that occurred here just last year and hold space for the memory of Kelly Kusin. My thoughts are with Kelly's loved ones and with the residents of the King and Maple neighborhood who were impacted by this really traumatic incident. And I think I'm just gonna pause for just a moment of silence to really honor and create that space. Thank you. As mayor, I am committed to improving community safety in our city and ensuring our public spaces are safe and vibrant for everyone. We're working hard every day to try new things, explore different initiatives, and adapt with data and community input to improve the safety in our community. Vibrant and frequently used public spaces are really key to making sure our community is strong. It is my hope that this renovated pocket park can help this neighborhood and our community come together and heal. We are very grateful for the community and financial support that made this project possible. In addition to funds from the Penny for Parks program, the park impact fees from our and our recent city bond, this project was supported by several organizations. And they include a $50,000 award from the T-Mobile's hometown grant program, a $25,000 donation from the King Street Neighborhood Revitalization Corporation, which has an acronym, which I'm not gonna say the acronym because there's 4,000 acronyms in this city. Anyway, and finally funding <clears throat> for landscaping, benches and the picnic tables from the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity, which we do know as CVOEO, and also programmed um, cleanup and art events in the park. Community outreach and engagement for this project was a comprehensive and long-term effort. BR, uh, BRPW staff, which is our Burlington Parks Recreation and Waterfront uh, Department, held in-person community visioning events at the King Street Center and in the park, and over 90 responses were received through an online community survey. This included numerous responses translated from several other languages. And I'll just pause by saying this neighborhood is really one of our most racially and economically diverse ones, especially for the South End, and language access is such an important part of community engagement. And I really appreciate um, how this was a part of this, this little pocket parts engagement moment, but it's a larger effort and commitment. Ooh, don't do that. Uh, for the city to make sure that language access is truly integrated in all of our important community dialogues. Staff presented and received that feedback uh, from the Ward 2, 3, 5, and 6 MPAs, um, which is half the city, throughout the initial visioning and project design. The park design was presented to and reviewed by the Burlington's Advisory Committee on Accessibility, and the playground design was further refined by a subcommittee focused on playground accessibility. Another moment to just sort of pause because I really want to emphasize equity inclusion. It does, it really needs to include physical accessibility and really being thoughtful around public space. And I'm so pleased that beyond the Oak Ledge Accessibility Playground that we now have another um, thought, thought out playground that includes these important principles. And from that outreach, our community asks that we keep the space open for relaxing and low key events and that we replace and expand the existing playground. We heard what they wanted to see a space that looks clean and feels welcoming and safe. In response, park staff designed the space to use durable, attractive, and low-maintenance materials, including steel and aluminum fencing, concrete walkways, and accessible pour-in uh, a pour-in-place rubber playground surfacing. My kids will love that, by the way. Uh, flowering shrubs and small trees planted on the north and sides of the park here, and uh, add beauty and soften the edges. I love those hydrangeas, by the way. I'm not making this about me, but like that, those ones are, are truly lovely. And, I, and as you're all standing um, here in the center of the park, this remains open for informal gatherings and for play, uh, picnicking and all sorts of other items. A light fixture has been installed near the back of the park to improve visibility throughout the park at night. And new picnic tables, benches and planters, which will be planted with vegetables that can be harvested for free um, by the community by this time next year. And this all completes this wonderful park. Uh, in general, I really think that this is, again, when we talk about, and I talk about community safety and all the elements that go into this, taking up space and giving a vital and, and vibrant place for the community to convene is part of the community safety strategy. Because it's a way for people to plug into their community 
to create that added, um, not sense, a sense of community, but really taking up space and really convening is how we start to really bring ourselves back together in uh, really informal ways that everyone can be a part of. So I really appreciate um, this pocket park is, represents so much more in terms of what the city needs to do. Thank you again <coughs> to the community input, to those who provide a community input uh, for the careful capital planning and the thoughtful design. We have invigorated this valuable public space located in one of Burlington's densest neighborhoods and on the edge of our downtown for both current and future generations to enjoy. Thank you all for being here today. Um, this is really a wonderful, I love these moments where there's a positive thing to celebrate about Burlington because there's a lot going right in this city. And here we are here to celebrate one of those great moments. Thank you so much. And now, I would introduce you, but hi, my name is Emma and you are? Hi Emma, I'm Sam. This is Sam from TV Mobile. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emma. Great job. Hello, I'm Sam from T-Mobile. I am the local market manager for the state of Vermont. As we know, the economy is, is tough right now and every dollar counts. So we are invested in supporting the communities that we serve. Not only bringing wireless solutions, but being an actual member of the community and giving back is one of our largest priorities, especially in rural America. T-Mobile's hometown grants are a part of a massive project launched uh, in April 2021, where we are invested in bridging the digital divide, enhancing our connections, as well as supporting essential services throughout the community, and more. To date, T-Mobile's hometown grants have donated $14 million to 325 communities across 47 states. We wanted to congratulate Burlington, Burlington Parks, Recreations, and Waterfront on this amazing project. And I wanted to thank you all for having me be a part of it. So congratulations, thank you again. Good morning, I'm Cindy White. I'm the Director for Parks, Recreation, and Waterfront. And it's just fantastic to be here today with all of you. Thank you for joining us. We can't have parties unless people come to them. So thanks, thanks for joining us. So this project has been a long time in the making. Uh, going back and looking at the records, it was January of 2020 when we had our first outreach meeting at the King Street Center. And I think we all know what happened in March. So the coronavirus pandemic slowed things down. We had to put a few projects on hold because we really weren't sure, you know, many of us weren't sure what to do and how to do it. So this project went on hold while we were able to focus on other projects. Um, and then we picked it back up again. But inflation hit, as we know, during that time. And so what we had budgeted for the project wasn't be, going to be enough. But in many ways, I think of it as a blessing because since we didn't have enough money, we had to go out to our partners and seek more funds. We were able to find the T-Mobile grant through the help of our city plan, our, excuse me, our city grants team. Um, Nate, who we'll recognize in a minute, Nate was our parks commissioner. He helped us connect to CVOEO. So there was more neighborhood connections that were made through that pause in time for us to get there, a little bit more thoughtful planning so that we had the, um, the park that we have today. I do want to thank um, our parks commissioner, Nate Lantieri. So Nate, raise your hand again. So Nate's on our parks commission. He's been on it. I think he may be the longest serving parks commissioner right now. I think that's the case. Um, and so Nate really um, served not just as a parks commissioner coming to meetings, but he also adopted this project. And he was here for the open houses. He's been here for when there's cleaning days. You, there, there was an old fence that was here. Nate came when the project first started just to start cleaning the space up to make it look better, taking the vegetation off the fence, helping clean up in the back, um, knowing that it was gonna take us a while to get there. So Nate, thank you for not just your leadership of the Parks Commission, who's now our vice chair, um, but also your commitment to this project. Um, I also wanna just note the uh, quality work from our contractors. Um, there's really just amazing fit and finish as everybody would see here from Middlebury Fence that did the um, uh, fence for us. Uh, we had Waterman Site Works was the overall contractor for it. And then Ulti Play Parks and Playgrounds is the one who, um, who provided the playground equipment with cash, of course, but they're the ones that, uh, that brought that uh, playground to us. Um, I also want to thank Nate Bessio and Julia Wayne 
They both worked with our planning team to review and modify the playground design to make it more, make it as inclusive as possible within the available site constraints and the available funds. So it's something that as, um, as our mayor noted is a really a priority for us is making our parks more accessible to all. And this project here was well and small in scale, really makes a difference. You can roll in onto the playground. There's spinny things that help those that are like need that more, uh, more of that type of a pull to them to help them settle into the space um, through just being able to the color changes. If you are visually impaired, you're able to see the changes in the uh, playground. So again, um, thank you to uh, those individuals and the accessibility committee that really helps us raise the bar in our playgrounds. Uh, we've got some park staff that really did just really help with us. They're not here today, but I really would like to acknowledge them. So our parks facility team did all the wiring um, and installation of the new light pole uh, and coordinating with Burlington Electric Department. A shout out to Chris, Ian and Jake um, for their contributions for this project. And our trees team did this thoughtful, uh, the plantings that our mayor was admiring. They really do just a beautiful job with what they choose for the parks. Um, so they chose the trees, the plants to be in the park. And then of course, um, also did the weeding. And as the mayor mentioned, um, Vijay Komai, who's our city arborist, who's just a delightful individual. He's done a pilot project out at Dewey using planters to grow vegetables for the neighborhood. And you'll see the planters out there by the sidewalk. He'll be doing that same thing here um, at Champlain Street Park for next year. Again, we appreciate VJ and the, the creativity that he brings to the team. And lastly, I just wanna thank the planning team for their thoughtful outreach and design and specifically Max Madelinsky. Throughout all of this, Max never lost the faith. I think he might've been a little bit disappointed when we heard we had to put that project on hold in uh, I think it was March and April that we had to make that decision um, for that but he didn't lose the faith with this. He kept focused on the project. I think he learned a lot of really cool design skills during that time. Max was able to bring to us, not just kind of a sketch that, you know, some of us might've done on paper, but Max learned a lot of design software during that process. And so he was able to show the community um, what they could see and really see it from a conceptual level rather than you know, more of an abstract level. So Max, thank you for that commitment that you did for the project for not losing faith um, and for the considerable outreach that you did for it. And then of course, thank you to John Adams Kolitz, um, who supports, and Sophie, who both supported Max throughout um, all of this. And then where's Jules? Jules doing the amazing story uh, gathering there. Jules is our outreach uh, manager, and she'll be making sure that everybody knows about this. Um, and I just wanna note uh, park impact fees, because I think I see Nate in the back there. So park impact fees for the city come about through development. When people build buildings, build housing, build, improve on some of their buildings, I don't know all the specifics, but whenever they generally, whenever you build something, a piece of that, there's park impact fees that happen. Nate, what was the address? Yours is just, is it this way, that way? I've lost track. 157 South Champlain Street. So 157 Champlain, they contributed impact fees for their impact on this neighborhood. And we're able to take those impact fees to make improvements for that neighborhood. So Nate, thank you for contributing to our housing and um, for paying those impact fees. Um, so again, thank you to everybody for showing up here today. And I believe, is there anybody here from the King Street Neighborhood Center? Brian Pine is the lead for that one. So just, we wanna thank Brian for all he does with that. And otherwise I'm gonna pass it off to Paul Dragon from CVOEO. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, on behalf of CVOEO, we are just filled with absolute gratitude today. Uh, I want to thank Burlington Parks and Rec, Cindy, the team, and Max, especially you for all your coordination of this and all your efforts. Um, really want to thank the mayor for the mayor's commitment to the uh, safety, health, and well-being of this beautiful community. I want to thank Kevin Weiberg, who was our coordinator for CVOEO, and I want to thank our whole CVOEO team who came out here and did a couple of cleanup days. And of course, Nate, um, with his leadership, just fantastic. Um, so thank you all very much. You know, uh, I saw, Kevin showed me a before and after picture. Well, I see, we all see what's after in this beautiful park, but the before picture is quite stark. And so, when I walk by here now and I see kids playing, I see people eating, 
it is just an amazing difference in it. And it is what beautiful places can do for a community. And the mayor had mentioned a tragic incident here. And um, we know that when there's a tragedy or when there's any problem in our community, we have two options. We can retreat or step back or we can move forward uh, and reclaim the space and reclaim each other. And that's exactly what we all did today with T-Mobile's help, with Burlington Parks, with the mayor's office and everybody. This is what it takes to face any condition in our community. And for CVOEO, you know, we focus so much on crisis management, homelessness, food, warmth. But we know the foundation of our community is in our natural settings, in our music, and in our art. And we are so proud to be a part of this park to bring some beauty to this neighborhood, a place of respite and peace. And again, thank you all so much for coming out today. Appreciate it. Again, thank you so much to everybody for coming out to the event today. We do have some snacks and such in the back if anybody would like anything. Um, and then staff and the mayor, I believe, are available right after if anybody has um, wants to do any interviews. Thank you. Oh, ribbon cutting. Oh, my goodness. The official ribbon cutting. And OK, and we have to just notice the team, of course, has branded colors for the BPRW branded colors with the ribbon. So please, um, partners, come forth. If you were involved in this project, please come forth as part of the ribbon cutting. Yeah, don't be shy. Come on up. These always look so different. I mean, you're the, you and I are the only ones who actually go to every one of these media. Right. I'm not going to harm anyone. Yeah. All right, are we ready? Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> you want to count down? Okay, yeah, let's run. Two, three. Woo! 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 Those aren't too quite sharp for being for being big scissors. Yeah. 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 Carrying them very safely. Thank you. Good. Good. Okay. 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 Please help yourselves to coffee, food, seltzer, anything we've got. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you so much. So I'm Nate Dejess. I'm one of the developers um, in the nearby uh, City West building at 157 South Champlain Street. Um, we just completed the project about six months ago and we've kind of known about this project coming. Uh, it's a great little pocket park, um, such an urban area. So to have this little pocket park um, is really exciting. Uh, we have some families with some young children in the building. So for them to be able to walk literally two minutes outside the building to this park, I think is a really great amenity. So really excited to, to have this park here. Thank you. I'm Max Madalinski. I'm a project coordinator with Burlington's Park Recreation and Waterfront Department. Uh, I've been working with the city for about seven years and have been working on the renovations and outreach for Champlain Street Park, which we're here to celebrate today since about 2020. Uh, we got going on this project before the pandemic started, started reaching out to the neighborhood and community organizations around here, seeing what they wanted to see with their park. Unfortunately, thanks to COVID and uh, sort of upending all of our budget and planning, we had to put the project on hold for a little bit. But we picked our outreach back up in 2021, moved through all of our design. Actually, uh, me and my coworkers at the Parks Department took on the design of this park. Uh, took in the feedback from the community we heard about people wanting this to just be cleaned up, have a nice big playground, have a nice place to come out and picnic and hang out with your friends. And over a few years, we found some contractors, did a lot of fundraising. Uh, a big thank you to T-Mobile, who gave us 50 grand for this, uh, the King Street Neighborhood Revitalization Corporation, which is a mouthful, but they gave us another 25000 in donations. Uh, we partnered with the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity, who also donated all the landscaping and benches and site furnishings you see here in the park. Um, and we've, you know, found contractors and turned it into a really nice space that will be a valuable asset for our downtown and our community into the future. So we're really glad to have people out here to celebrate the reopening of this park and uh, all of the work and community and investment that we've put into this space.
So have there been many neighbors participating, like volunteers, neighbors participating in this project? Yes, we've had uh, uh, actually a guy who's here, Nate Lantieri, who's on our Parks Commission and lives here in the neighborhood, has been organizing uh, community volunteer days. In the lead up to renovating and replacing the fence, they came out and they did cleanup of removing a lot of vegetation in advance of that. Uh, they've done a number of vegetation like sweeps since then. and. Uh, came out and helped oh, with some of the weeding and planting things. Closer, um, you guys are good. Let's see, we <laughs> had a whole bunch of different community events, either here in the park or uh, at the King Street yeah. Center yeah. Oh, way yeah. back when, when we were doing outreach on this project. Uh, and then, yeah, I've talked to all the neighbors around here in advance of us starting our construction. Yeah. And, uh, we've also worked a lot with the CVOEO on sort of finalizing and coming up with the landscape plan. Yeah, for this park. yeah we've, talked with a lot of different people over the course of this and because it's been going on for about five years it's uh yeah i've heard from a lot of different community yeah. members so do you have um, any special events planned here for next summer this summer or next summer uh not yet but uh, i can talk to our events planner about that nothing on the yeah. near term as far as i know but that's a good idea we should get on that it's okay. so nate lantieri uh l-a-n-t-i-e-r-i um, and I'm a King of Maple neighbor, community member, um, and I'm also the vice chair of the Burlington uh, Parks, Rec, and Waterfront Commission. And I'm really excited to be here today to see the Champlain Street Park finally open. Um, I've been working on this project for a long time. Parks has been working on it for even longer, and the community has known that it needed some work for um, you know quite some time too. So it's really exciting to see it finally done. Um, and really kind of coming from a great perspective of uh, grassroots organizing, um, the city doing a lot of outreach and connecting with, I heard today, 90 neighbors in an official survey, and I'm sure many more unofficially as well. Um, and these different organizations coming together, you know, CVOEO, King Street Neighborhood Revitalization Corporation, um, VHFA very slightly, um, and then many neighbors that uh, just came by to give a little bit of time. Um, it really, it really shows the the uh, impact of many small steps in, in realizing that like, okay, we have some some community need. You know, our park could better suit our needs. Our park needs some updating. Um, what can we do little by little to get there? And, and, and finally, we're here. So, really excited that um, we're going to have this great park for many years, and that uh, kids and families and you know, really anybody in the neighborhood has this space to uh, enjoy and play and spend time with their friends, their family um, in, in this rare kind of green space in our pretty urban neighborhood. So um, thanks everybody who helped it happen. And, and thanks for uh, listening to the story of the Champlain Street Park. Can you think of any events that you'd like to have here? The neighbors talk about anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we have had previous uh, different kind of neighborhood events here, a few different free community barbecues and art activities um, and that was briefly kind of paused as the construction was really being completed but now that the park's finished um, I think that you know potentially by the end of this this season in the fall um, and certainly in the spring once it's time to get back out into the into the greenery of Vermont out of the the drudgery of winter um, you know future community barbecues future opportunities for neighbors to just get the chance to to see each other and realize that um, you know we share a lot just by living together in this neighborhood and um, we, we can all be served by the space and, and uh, have a chance to actually meet and, and get to know each other. So very excited that that's certainly going to be happening with other community support um, sometime in the near future. Okay, so there was a mural here. Yeah. So if you just like walk over here for a second, mm -hmm. just going to follow you. So, uh, do you think the community will have any impact on the new mural that's going to go up on that building, or is yeah. there a plan for a new mural? Yeah, on that I hope building? so. There's no um, concrete details at the moment, um, but um, you know, myself and other community members have been in conversation with the building owner uh, to think about what the future of that mural should be. Um, it needed to be covered for uh, you know just paint quality purposes last year, so we we're thinking there was going to be an opportunity at that time, but the turnaround was too quick. Um, so now that, um, you know, there's not really a rush, there's, there's kind of, uh, uh, some deliberation to make sure that we get it right. But, um, you know, ultimately it is because it's a private building, the, he has final say kind of on what, what goes on, 
to that side of the, the space, but I know that he has, um, and in the past, mural design and in this process to engage with community members. So uh, TBD, but that's really kind of the last major piece of, of infrastructure that the park needs. And once we can get something up there um, that reflects the community values and reflects kind of this diversity of experience here, diversity and similarity of experience here, I think, um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, <laughs> we'll be pretty close to done, and just making sure that we maintain it as a great space for the community. So, uh, when you are when someone actually is working on that mural, feel free to let us know at Town Meeting TV, yeah, and we'll come down certainly. and we'll show them doing it. We'll do, yeah. and then the final product. Yeah, and then you're probably going to have another ceremony. Yep, so feel exactly. Free. Yeah, so keep us posted. Please. We will continue anytime there. You're totally right that that's the last major thing, but um, when it happens, we will certainly reach out because. Painting mural looks cool too. <laughs>